The subject of today's video is a disease. A disease widely associated with sailors with rotten gums and an absence of a balanced diet. Scurvy. This is a disease that ravaged navies and explorers throughout history and was not well understood. In today's video, we will cover just what scurvy is, its debilitating effects and its impact on history. It is perhaps helpful to start with a description of what scurvy is. It is simply a disease caused by a lack of vitamin C. Vitamin C is a vital vitamin. It is an antioxidant used in the body to create collagen. Collagen is vital in the production of connective tissues and blood vessels, a glue that essentially holds the body together. Due to a random mutation, the body is not capable of synthesizing its own vitamin C, unlike the majority of mammals. Only humans, guinea pigs or guinea pigs, bats and birds are unable to synthesize vitamin C with the body. Instead, vitamin C needs to be consumed by way of fruits and vegetables, namely the likes of lemons, oranges, peppers, potatoes or broccoli. The human body needs to consume at least 40 milligrams of vitamin C a day, which can be achieved by eating a single orange. For those with a poor diet or lack of access to fruits and vegetables, the risk of scurvy can lead to some nasty symptoms and even death. Those at particular risk of contracting scurvy are the malnourished, the institutionalized and the chronically ill. Within a matter of weeks of not consuming vitamin C, the levels can reach a point where scurvy symptoms will begin to present. Fatigue, diarrhea and general weakness will be some of the first signs, albeit fairly non-specific. Some of the earliest to spot signs can be dry skin as the collagen production begins to suffer. In the mouth, bleeding and receding or swollen gums will be common. So too will be dental caries, teeth falling out and gingivitis. As the blood vessels begin to lose their structure, the patient will be prone to bruising. Red spots caused by hemorrhaging will begin to form under the skin. Blood will leak from damaged and decaying vessels, with the blood leaking and coagulating in muscles. It can even be the case that old wounds will begin to open up and new wounds will fail to close, leading to a risk of infection. In time, the patient will begin to show jaundice, experience a loss of red blood cells and fits. It is not just the body that scurvy affects, but also the mind. Vitamin C is an antioxidant capable of ridding the nervous system of free radicals, molecules that can damage the nervous system. Without vitamin C, synapses become blocked and dopamine cannot be correctly absorbed. This can lead to symptoms such as hallucinations, bad dreams and a longing for dry land. If left untreated, a person can die from internal hemorrhaging or infection. To put it simply, scurvy causes the body to disintegrate. Although the treatment for scurvy is very simple, an increase in consumption of vitamin C. Whether it is a vitamin supplement or consuming the right foods, the impact can be seen in as soon as 24 hours. For the more ingrained conditions, a course of supplements over a few weeks will cure the scurvy. Within a few weeks, a person can fully recover, often without any long-term side effects. For much of human history, however, the causes of scurvy were not well understood. Some of the first cases of scurvy were identified in ancient Egypt. But cases of scurvy began to gain attention during the Crusades and the Age of Discovery. With a large movement of people, often on ships, cases of scurvy increased. It was not just those travelling by ship that contracted scurvy, with reports of the illness affecting Europeans in harsh winters where green vegetables were harder to come by. Without access to fresh fruits and vegetables, and instead only able to eat long-lasting foods lacking in vitamin C, scurvy ran rampant. Where voyages could last weeks at a time, sailors were at risk of contracting the disease. A general rule of thumb as to the mortality rates aboard a ship could be as high as 50%, with scurvy being one of the leading causes. From 1500 to 1800, it is estimated that as many as 2 million sailors died from scurvy. 
One account from a 16th century ship surgeon describes the horrors of a ship blighted by scurvy. It rotted all my gums, which gave out a black and putrid blood. My thighs and lower legs were black and gangrenous, and I was forced to use my knife each day to cut into the flesh in order to release this black and foul blood. I also used my knife on my gums, which were livid and growing over my teeth. When I had cut away this dead flesh and caused much black blood to flow, I rinsed my mouth and teeth with my urine, rubbing them very hard. And the unfortunate thing was that I could not eat, desiring more to swallow than to chew. Many of our people died of it every day, and we saw bodies thrown into the sea constantly, three or four at a time. Perhaps the worst example of a voyage affected by scurvy was led by George Anson in the 1740s. He was charged to plunder the Spanish ports and ships carrying silver with a fleet of six ships. However, gaining the 2,000 men needed proved difficult. Eventually, a military hospital was emptied, giving Anson a crew of old, PTSD-afflicted and disabled men. At the time, the standard treatment was an elixir of alcohol and sulfuric acid that offered little in the way of relief. Between turbulent seas, horrific weather, and scurvy, the crews were devastated. Five men a day died from scurvy. Of the 2,000 crew who departed, only a couple hundred survived. Many understood and recommended that citrus fruits would form part of a sailor's diet as to avoid scurvy though the reasons why was not properly understood. Work into curing scurvy saw the first reported and controlled clinical experiment. Scottish physician James Lind was the pioneer in naval hygiene, who sought to understand the causes of scurvy. Upon the HMS Salisbury in 1747, he gathered 12 sailors with scurvy and split them up into pairs. Each pair was given a purported cure for scurvy from a pint of salt water to a quart of cider, to a pair of oranges and a lemon. In the end, the pair given the oranges and lemons were the only ones to have a full recovery, and ended up helping Lind with the experiment. Despite what appeared to be clear evidence of the effects of eating citrus fruits, Lind reached the wrong conclusion. He believed that scurvy was a form of putrefaction, a stage of decomposition. Lind believed that the acid in the fruits would help with the scurvy and deal with the cause, which he believed to be the putrefying food within the body. He also attributed these conditions of living aboard the ships and the hard work required of the sailors as causes for the disease. Many others too believed that scurvy was a disease caused by poor digestion. The diet aboard the ships, whilst being better in many regards than on dry land, often lacked fresh fruits and vegetables. Salt-dried beef, oatmeal, and hard-tack ship biscuits offered plenty of calories, but not much in the way of vitamin C. There have been a number of explorers who have seen the benefit of citrus fruits aboard their ships. Many carried out experiments akin to Lin's, as the original experiment did not gain much attention. In 1768, James Cook navigated the globe, and successfully did so without losing a man to scurvy. A number of treatments other than citrus fruits were provided, namely malt and wort. It was incorrectly concluded that malt was the cause for the success of the trip, whilst in reality, the frequent stops to replenish stocks of fresh fruits and vegetables was the real reason. Nevertheless, malt became a standard cure for scurvy. In the 1790s, Rear Admiral Alan Gardner pushed to reject malt in favour of lemons. He had carried out a scurvy-free voyage to India, aboard the HMS Suffolk, ignoring medical advice to stock up with malt, instead demanding lemons. It was Gardner's voyage that convinced the British to change its policy and include lemons in sailors' diets. Lemon juice was often added to the grog rations, grog being a watered-down rum beverage. It became standard practice for nations to ensure citrus fruits were part of their sailors' diets. Lemons and oranges were often favoured, but limes replaced lemons for the British, leading to the nickname of Limeys. During the blockade of France by the British during the Napoleonic War, Lord Nelson ensured that his men had an additional 20,000 gallons of lemon juice to prevent scurvy from ravaging the crews and putting the blockade at jeopardy. 
During the Second World War, some conscientious objectors volunteered to partake in experiments on scurvy rather than to fight. In order to plan for the effects of food rationing, the Ministry of Health commissioned research into scurvy. 32 subjects lived together, their vitals monitored, and diets controlled. The goal was to learn the bare minimum amount of vitamin C the human body requires, with scurvy induced in the participants. In the end, the participants were able to make full recoveries without any long-term side effects. Today, scurvy is a relatively rare disease, thanks to the understanding as to the importance of vitamin C and improvements in diets. It is now classed as a historic disease. But that is not to say that the disease no longer crops up, often affecting those in refugee camps or those that eat a poor diet. The impact and the debilitating deaths it inflicted will ensure that scurvy remains one of the more disturbing diseases in the story of human exploration.